We were recently saddened to see that Nerdridge's brilliant video on cyanide preparation as part of his awesome series on pyrimethamine synthesis was removed from YouTube. So we figured screw YouTube. We've made cyanide salts before in our own video series and have used the product in reactions. We've also played around with a few ODC ways to do it, and today we thought that we'd do a Nerdridge tribute by playing around with a few more. So we've assembled a few reactants and we're going to have a play with them to see if we can create a product which tests positive. Now YouTube can get screwed, but remember that this stuff is definitely not something to screw around with. Here's actual sodium cyanide, the real deal. Just a boring looking white powder. But if you eat it you'll die in horrific agonizing lactic acidosis beyond your imagination. If you're stupid enough to try to poison someone then you're going to get caught because first of all it tastes very sharply alkaline, and secondly they're going to die fast and pretty obviously. You'll get caught, they'll throw away the key, and you're going to wish you could drink a load of it, but you'll spend your life rotting away instead. So don't be stupid. We made this sample using the sodium reduction of anhydrous potassium ferrocyanide. Check out our previous video for details. Okay let's do this. Urban legend number 1. Is it possible to create a cyanide salt by reducing urea with sodium metal? Let's find out. We've weighed out 2 grams of sodium metal and 2.5 grams of urea. This corresponds to a 2 to 1 ratio stoichiometrically of sodium to urea, and it's our best guess. There are some theoretical reactions which could occur, but byproducts are going to be formed which also react with sodium metal such as water, so it's not going to be a clear-cut reaction. Okay let's rock and roll. We'll place the sodium metal in the bottom of a crucible. And we'll place the urea on top. When the crucible is heated the urea should melt and then react with the sodium. In theory anyway. Made sure that the urea covers the sodium nicely. It's nice to see the ants have been flourishing while we've been away on our travels. Let's cook this and see what happens. Giving it a poke helps some sort of reaction take place. That's a bummer. Poking it also killed the crucible with the heat of the reaction. We'll just carefully add water to the residue now and see if we can dissolve it. Well there's still some sodium metal in there and overall it looks as though a lot of the urea decomposed before it had a chance to react. It's a bit of a messy reaction. Here's what we got in the end, all the residue on the broken crucible is dissolved in water and any excess sodium reacted. We're got a creamy suspension here probably containing some insolifluria decomposition byproducts as well. Let's filter and get rid of the insoluble stuff, as any sodium salts produced should be water soluble. It's a bit slow to filter but in the end we end up with a very pale yellow colored solution, and some darker solids remaining in the filter. The solution is actually very slightly viscous, suggesting that there's a lot of salts dissolved in here. We add this to 50 ml of absolute ethanol, which should dehydrate and force out a large proportion of those salts into the solid form.
After about 10 minutes of stirring, we've got a pale cream colored powder formed in the mixture. So let's filter. And here we go. 2.6 grams of dry very slightly pale solid product. This is likely to be a mixture of various products including sodium cyanate, sodium cyanamide, sodium dicyanamide, and possibly others. But does it contain any actual sodium cyanide? In order to prove one way or the other, we can do a quick but highly sensitive test. Here's a mixture of iron 2 sulfate and iron 3 chloride crystals. We'll dissolve them in some water. You can see the brown color of the iron 3 compared to the green color of the iron 2 salts. Okay, that's a solution. So now we just need to dissolve a little bit of our product in water and then add the iron salt mixture. So we've got a precipitate formed. Instead of telling you whether or not this is a positive test for cyanide, Let's use the real deal stuff and see what happens in parallel. This solution here contains a small amount of the real cyanide salt we showed at the beginning. And there we go. The combination of iron salts together with the cyanide form an immediate intense deep blue precipitate, known as Prussian blue. It's strongly visible even in quite dilute concentrations and has that very characteristic blueprint color. but it's not good news for our experiment. No point in hunting around for traces of blue or green in there in the hope that it's got some cyanide in. There's nothing. Just a pale precipitate of iron hydroxide and maybe carbonate. So this is debunked, at least under our messy DIY reaction conditions. In practice when urea and sodium metal react, a compound known as sodium cyanamide is apparently the main product but together with sodium hydroxide, and some sodium cyanate as a result of side reactions. So let's try something else. We read a rumor that sodium nitrate can be reduced to cyanide using carbon, charcoal powder in fact. And we've still got the lid of our crucible for a real down and dirty DIY reaction. So why not try it? Here's some crystalline sodium nitrate. Need to store it well stoppered as it tends to absorb moisture from the air. And here's a great source of high quality finely powdered carbon, activated charcoal tablets. Break them open and get out the pure stuff. Let's get cooking. We'll weigh out a 4 to 1 stoichiometric ratio of carbon to nitrate. 2 grams of sodium nitrate and 1.1 grams of the charcoal. It's a bit of a messy process with the capsules though. There is of course a potential catch in this process which is why we're somewhat skeptical. In mixing nitrate and charcoal we're basically halfway to making gunpowder. Oh well screw it, what could go wrong? Nicely mixed now. Yeah we were serious when we said we'd use the lid. It's just awesome that the folks next door have graduated from the tuba onto the recorder. Let's get some foil on this. And we're ready to rock.
heating up. For a while it looks like nothing is going to happen. And then... Okay well there's a fair bit of residue in the crucible, so let's dissolve into some water and see what we've got. That made a pretty good mess. But we've got a solution here that we can now filter and remove the carbon from. Amazing that the filtrate is perfectly clear despite the amount of fine black charcoal in there. Ok here we go. So now let's apply our mixed iron salt test again. Let's see if there's any trace of cyanide in this. The tiniest hint of a green color, but in reality no. There's no cyanide. If we now add dilute acid to the mixture, the precipitate reedy solves. But there's no blue color remaining. No cyanide. Well we can't leave you with that. So let's at least try it on a larger scale and see if it doesn't work for a second time. That's more like it. Maybe doing the reaction in a more enclosed environment will change things. That's a huge mess. A bit of a schoolboy error there, but at least we've got some more residue to test. So we'll do the same as before and dissolve in water, then filter the mixture, and then perform the test using the mixed iron salts. Again, the answer is no. No cyanide in here in any appreciable quantity. Doesn't mean that under different conditions it doesn't occur. Perhaps using a large excess of carbon would be a better test here. So that's all for this video. We've had a crazy 2018 with YouTube being pulled, lots of travel all over the world, and lots of other projects in swing. We'll see if we can get our usual Christmas special out in December for you. Thanks for watching. And continue to stay tuned.